What is going on, guys? We are back with another Realistic Star Rebuild. I'm Madden22, and today it is of the Minnesota Vikings, uh, the rival team of my favorite team, the Green Bay Packers, and uh, decided to mention that because I just can't control myself when talking about my team, but also because they did have a few off-season moves that are sort of involving that team. One of the biggest ones probably being signing Zedaria Smith, adding it to that pass rush, which, if stays healthy, could be a deadly duo. Obviously, now in a 3-4 defense, Zedaria Smith and Hunter, if healthy, which... You know, they both combined played like seven, eight, I mean like eight or nine games last season, which is not great. Could be really scary, obviously. Uh, Zedaria Smith opting out of the Ravens contract he was about to sign to join the Vikings, which, once again, I have to mention my team because there was a bit of bad blood near the end of that, uh, that whole, you know, Green Bay stint. I'm not really sure why he was so mad. If he played a whole season, if he was like prime freaking Aaron Donald. Green Bay was likely going to have to get rid of him just to have a chance to get Devontae, just to stay under the cap as he was just assigned a huge number. I thought maybe he would have stayed in Preston, would have gone, and which maybe could have been the case, but of course that injury missing the entire season obviously plays a factor into that. So I'm not sure, like, you know, he gave us some good years, but you, you missed the whole season. You can't expect to stick around, right? Of course... Hopefully he's healthy, even though he's on the Vikings. I, I still wish him the best, just because he is a really good player when healthy. And I imagine that's what he's going to give the Vikings, especially since, you know, when he's playing those two games against the Packers, maybe three for all we know with uh, the potential playoffs. The reason why I say potential playoffs is this team probably was playoff caliber. It's a very good uh, offense. They've got insane receiving talent. They obviously have a really, really good running back. Their offensive line is improving. Obviously, in Madden here, we're really looking good. Real life, there's still a little bit of a verdict to be uh, had. Irv Smith, they're still trying to get him to live up to the potential that they know they can get out of him. Uh, maybe that'll happen with the new head coach. Uh, like I said, with defense, though, secondary, that pass defense is just awful. Obviously, they added to that defense with Andrew Booth and uh, Lewis Seen. Uh, I gave them both star. I felt like it was fair. You know, I mean, I just... I feel like it's fair to give them both star. You can maybe argue against it, but I, I don't think there's anyone arguing higher than star. And uh, obviously very good at man and zone, or you know, decent at man and zone. Obviously one of the big things we need to fix, though, is the D-line. I know technically right now we're in you know a 4-3, but I'll change that real quick when we actually start the season. It's kind of irrelevant. So Phillips, Tomlinson, and Watts, I believe, will be the starting guys which absolutely needs to be upgraded. But like I said, with this team, it probably should have been a playoff team last year. You look at their schedule, and I'm pretty sure they had a bunch of games where they just barely lost. I know, you know, speaking of the Packers, I gotta keep bringing them up. They did have a game in that one, in that sense, where they did get a bit of luck. You know, a little bit of a little bit of the calls as well, which, you know, kind of helped them get that victory. And, you know, obviously the second game, they kind of got blown by a bit, but... So many close games that you change one or two things, and they're a playoff team. They're right up there, you know, maybe 11-6 and six, uh, on the season. But, yeah, that's that's hoping that they stay healthy for their sake, of course. Once again, I mean, I'm all in the sport of competition, but at the same time, like, I don't want them being better than my team. You know, they're division rivals after all. But, yeah, there's a lot of potential here. The real question is quarterback as well. Uh, I think Kirk Cousins is madly, I would say at this point, underrated or maybe overhated. Uh, you know, people, especially Vikings fans, are like, why do we keep giving Kirk these contracts? I almost argue the other way around saying, why does Kirk keep accepting these contracts? If he hit the open market right now, he'd probably get the guarantee that he got, you know, on this year basis over several years. We've seen what happened with Deshaun Watson. I know he's a lot younger, but he has so many question marks. Kirk Cousins right now, the only question mark is can he do it on the big stage, if you will, you know, in prime time. But he's a solid quarterback, and I think he's absolutely worth the money that he's been getting. I, I, I don't know why he gets so much hate. Obviously, he does have a lot of talent around him, but he still does exactly what you ask him to do. And, I mean, you look at con contracts like Tannehill and, and Jimmy Garoppolo, and you really think, wow, you know, the Vikings aren't that bad off with uh, Kirk Cousins. Of course, with his age in Madden, you know, we gave him a star dev. He started with normal. 
which is really crazy when you look at his numbers. Uh, I mean, he's a good quarterback, and if we decide to maybe work his overall up based on performance like we usually do with these kind of rebuilds where the quarterback's an older veteran that still has plenty of time in the league to play. It just comes down to how well they're playing. Maybe he could be the long-term guy. I'm not sure, but let's get on to it with this Minnesota Vikings rebuild where, once again, maybe it is because of uh, Kirk's age. I almost never see them win the Super Bowl AI-wise. Also, I, there's a couple more points I didn't really hit on, but... Man, that Michael Pierce contract just did not work out. When I saw them get Michael Pierce, I was like, uh-oh. This D-line could be scary. Then, of course, he opts out because of COVID. Then he plays half the season, and then he goes back to the Ravens. I mean, never worked out. And it's just It seemed like such a good decision. It was going to be a good uh, addition, but it just never did. Uh, also, the draft trading, I still cannot understand that Vikings-Lions trade. It, it, like, I just don't get it. Why did the Minnesota Vikings give up 46? I get you wanted more value. Maybe there's just nobody trading, but why? Why would you do that? They gave up 230 points in value to move down. If you're moving up, fair enough. You know, you're getting what you want. So you maybe do have to give up that extra to get what you want. But they moved down and lost 230 points. That's like a super high third round pick they left on the board to trade down. And of course, people are clowning them for also doing the same with the Packers, giving them another wide receiver as well, which is ironic because, once again, their pass defense is so bad. But at least in that case, they did kind of gain like a late third in value with that trade. So that one doesn't really hurt them as much, which of course, I'm glad to see it. You know, trade the Packers proper, steal, you know, picks from them. But the Detroit Lions getting potentially the best wide receiver in the class who's going to burn you for years. Hey, we'll give them a high third in value on top of it. Okay, I'm just salty, okay? But, but it's true. It's all true. They never, ever let the guy that I want to develop, develop. I have Osborne as the guy I want to develop. They're going to go with Johnson, of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't they? Also, I meant to lower Ed Ingram's overall, but kind of didn't he is 23 so i expect to replace him anyways but still and uh, as far as this team still probably needing a quarterback i'm just in case because of the age and the contract situation i probably will go with the real class again so re-signings patrick peterson i know they uh they kind of like him around there in minnesota but his age is just it's just caught up with him unfortunately and there's just no point in trying to get him back Jordan Berry, uh, Chanin Sullivan, I actually do not know what he got paid. Once again, those Vikings, man, they really love Green Bay Packers players. I guess, you know, you're in division and you get to see them often, but man, get your own damn players. <laughs> of course, with the special teamers, we'll have to see how they play, uh, at least specifically Greg Joseph to see who are resigning, and I gotta admit, so far it's not looking great for him. We do have a lot of cap space. I don't know if that's like a thing for the Vikings in real life as well, but, uh, you know, if that's the case, it's not the worst situation to be in because we have all the players signed properly. Oh, my, we just lost to the freaking 2-9 and nine Lions. That's that's the season right there. Not quite sure if we're going to make the playoffs. It's an okay year, and we do make the playoffs. 9-8, and eight, you know, it's about as okay as you can get where it's literally like dead even. Uh, of course, we went with the Indianapolis Colts playbook because I really wanted to run the ball a lot and I wanted the quarterback to not have to really win games per se. And it seemed like it worked, right? I suppose, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to go away from Mike Zimmer, uh, you know, his playbook says he's not here anymore. But Kirk Cousins, you know, a very Kirk Cousin-like season, right? You're not going to flash too crazy with the yards and the touchdowns, but you're not going to throw too many interceptions. Dalvin Cook, 17 touchdowns, 1,700 yards, 5.7 yards per carry. But like I said, it's going to take a toll on the receiving group as they're really not going to get involved as much. So, I mean, maybe we got to find a little bit more balance of a playbook. But I suppose it got us to the playoffs. And, of course, Zedaria Smith with 12 and a half sacks, proving once again worth it to take that quote-unquote chance because it does feel like a prove-it deal type of contract when you consider what he did with Green Bay despite the injury and what he got paid originally – uh, on more of a of a risk, whereas now it's kind of like you know what he's about, and you know how good he is. For him to get a three year forty two with really all the guarantees being gone after the first year, and the guarantees not even being that high, I mean this is a really good contract for the Vikings. They've been signing some pretty decent contracts lately. They just can't get players here, which is unfortunate. We know the pain, all right. 
that, that northern, uh, you know, the Midwest region, especially more in the northern uh, part of it. Yeah, not the easiest place to get people. I know it's a dome here, but still. Of course, uh, we'll take a look at the awards. I can't really imagine we would have had any other than maybe Dalvin, which, of course, you can see we won't because Zeke was the MVP. Was Dalvin Cook not even on the list? I thought he had a really good year. Number six on the NFC side, at least. Robert Quinn's been killing it lately. Uh, quarterback goes, speaking, just talking about Jimmy Garoppolo, goes to Jimmy Garoppolo. Kirk Cousins at nine, Dalvin at two. Obviously not a wide receiver. Oh, Thielen at number nine. Touchdowns, I guess, matter that much. O-line, no. D-line, no. But linebacker, yeah, I was about to say, Daniil Hunter and Zedaria Smith, number one and number two. Pro Bowl guys for sure. Kicking, uh, maybe, I thought maybe, and it's not the worst season in the world. Might be worthy of keeping them around, but... We're in the playoffs, which, you know, this team should be, but going up against a super powerhouse in the the Buccaneers. If the Buccaneers and the Packers aren't, it's got to be the Cowboys then, right? Yeah, 14-3. I was about to say, because that's, that's a pretty high uh, record we have here going up against in the first week of pre uh, you know, postseason. I say first week as if we're going to have more than one, but whatever, dude. 82 versus their 85. Still rocking that Colts scheme, so... It's going to take a lot to win this. All right, going to the end of the game. Anything can happen, but let's just be honest. If we're if we're going to be placing bets, it's it's going to be that you will enjoy your stay if you leave a like and subscribe. Well, subscribe. The like is just a bonus. Of course, appreciate you a ton. If you are uh, not new and you're a continued supporter of the channel, really means a ton. And, yeah, we're going to need your support here because uh, not a great season. Not a great season because not only did we make the playoffs, but we got smoked in them. So we obviously know we're not ready yet. We're going to have a draft pick that's not really going to be super great to work with. Uh, of course, Kirk Cousins throwing three interceptions. Once again, we talked about that earlier where it's just can he do it in pride time? Can he do it when it matters the most? And it just appears, you know, Season in and season out that that's not the case. Sean Murphy bunting with two picks. Logan Ryan with a pick. Just not, not a great showing. The worst part is we kind of went away from the ground game because we just got down to, you know, a deficit, a big deficit really early in that game. And it's just you can't really bounce back from that when you're a run first team and you're down 14-0 to after the first quarter. Cowboys versus Chargers, Super Bowl, two teams that absolutely have the talent to do it, but just don't seem like they're able to get over the hump to get there. Uh, but of course, here you can see they do uh, win it, the Chargers, that is 28-7. to Let's take a look if we had any dev ups. I would say it's only on defense if we had one as offense was, I mean, Dalvin was great. But he's already an X-Factor, you know, and Kirk Cousins wasn't good enough, obviously. Thielen was okay, but yards were low. Uh, Zadarius is an X-Factor, which, uh, you know, 12 and a half sacks will do that for you. Uh, was it 11 or 12 and a half? I can't. I think he had 12 and a half, but Daniil won it with 11. Maybe he had more tackles for a loss, fumbles for us, whatever it may be. But that was the only dev up, which is really sucky because, wow, Harrison Smith just went down a lot. Oh, my Three speed. How old is he? I mean, I get it. But wow, that hurts. That is pain. Of course, I think after next season in real life, they can get rid of him. And I think we have really no choice but to do that in this rebuild. I mean, real life, I wouldn't like to. But I mean, what can I do? Like, he's just, he's going to be like an 80 overall. I want to give Greg Joseph another chance. But at the same time... Do should I? It's only a one. I'll give him one more try. I'll give him one more try at it, and maybe if he does well enough, he'll get a long-term deal. A one-year, one point two five million. It's really cheap. It's on the low end for sure for kickers. So, I suppose in that sense, if he sucks, at least we, you know, we kind of got what we paid for. Free agents best available is Melvin Gordon. Uh, James Bradbury is here, who I think only did get a one-year deal in real life. He kind of does feel like a Minnesota Viking as well. Maybe that's just me thinking that, but he does kind of feel that way. Ronnie Harrison would be nice, but probably out of our price range since he's a superstar dev player. Uh, punter, obviously we let go, so we'll need to replace that position. And, I mean, D-line would definitely be one of the biggest needs for us, but I'm not seeing a whole lot here for us. Uh, who is the DT around here? Dalvin? Let's see. I think Dalvin is a bigger guy, but if he is smaller, maybe we can go with Hicks. We pretty much have the whole freaking division going for Larry here, and 
Obviously, one of them is going to have to play against him. So we do get Larry and we do get James. Uh, this is a weird team because it's a team that's not quite rebuilding and it's not quite reloading. Uh, it's just a weird spot to be in, but obviously still probably looking at quarterback because Kirk is going to need another contract. He's playing okay, but he, I mean, it's, at this point with that playoff loss, you really wonder if he can ever get you to where you want to be. Uh, guys like Anthony Richardson are there, you know, a bit of speed perhaps. Uh, Grayson McCall, Max Johnson kind of just you know, came out of nowhere. What's his strength? Solid throw power. That's like 88, 89. What about Grayson McCall? Uh, AA, wow, this uh, solid as well for throw power. Though. I kind of want like a strong arm guy. I want a guy with a high ceiling based on that throw power. Good throw power here. It's kind of a tough one because, I mean, you can see here we have a lot of scouts. You know, we scouted these guys, but we're not really getting a whole lot back. Uh, you know, and just elite throw power. I mean, I think our floor is probably Grayson McCall. And then DJ is just kind of like if Grayson goes before we're ready, maybe that's where we go. I don't know, but I think you probably take quarterback this year and sit them for a year because, you know, we're going to be at maybe pick 19 or so. Should be able to land one. Wide receiver also isn't off the books. You know, we're, we're a team that definitely wants to get ahead of the aging of Adam Thielen. EJ Williams could be that guy. They mentioned him as a prospect spotlight guy, but I don't, I just don't know if I trust him. All right, we're in the draft, but the Bills and the Raiders have pick one and two, which is just, I mean, quite strange. I'm not really sure how that happened, but of course, that's how it goes. Bryce Young goes to the Bills, makes sense. And the Raiders, who could have, at least it would have been more realistic taking quarterback, don't. And they go wide receiver, uh, which is a little interesting. Cardinals probably don't go QB, right? They go tight end. Okay, fair enough. This is obviously Stroud without a doubt. And uh, the Lions are going to somehow at pick five get Will Anderson, which is just insane. No, they go Breesy, which is just as good. Jets got to go Will Anderson. They do uh, Philadelphia at number eight. Uh, it's kind of crazy, though. Where's Seattle? To be fair, we didn't trade them the Broncos pick, but they don't have that pick anyways. How good was Seattle in this? The Broncos, of course, are like pick 15 or so. Uh, where is Seattle's? Oh, yeah. I think the Jets still have Seattle's pick in this, don't they? Either way, we're going to go to pick 19. We might lose out on the quarterback, but at the end of the day, there's a couple of late first-round guys, which I'd be willing to take. But if Anthony Richardson's here, I think it's hard to pass. And it appears he's here. We didn't get any more scout on any of the guys I was trying to get more on other than Pickens. Nice, nice. Grayson McCall's also very decent, though. Solid throw power. He's athletic. I don't know. He's He looks really good, too. But Anthony Richardson, maybe get that uh, the the spark of the one season I believe that Randall Cunningham was decent for the Vikings. Not that he was there long, anyways. But I guess Anthony Richardson is quote unquote the better prospect. So I technically let's go with him. Hidden development trait, ninety five throw power, fast. You know you're betting on that throw power a little bit, whereas uh, McCall is. You know, he's pretty weak with that throw power for uh, the way he's built there, at least. I don't know, real life or not. But the Bills are going to go with another quarterback. Now they go with a linebacker. They don't really need that. And the Raiders go QB in the second round. Come on, man. Of course, it's immense value. But uh, I guess I can't even blame it. This one's going to is, once again, immense value. We're trading up 11 spots using pick 115 this year and 124 next year. If we had a fifth this year, I would have done that instead. But we don't, so... To make it fair, we had to kind of do that. Which, with this pick, we'll be taking Mr. Pickens, who looks like a pretty good defensive lineman. The strength is a little bit of a concern, but he obviously looks good enough with other stuff like A finesse, B tackle, very athletic. He's kind of exactly what we need. I'm just hoping for hidden. That's all I ask for. <laughs> oh, no, no, dude. Those potentials look so good, and he's normal dead. That's just... That's brutal. I mean, it's simply brutal. It's really, really tough. Uh, and then in the third round, I think we probably will go for a wide receiver. I probably want McMillan a little more since he's a bit bigger. But, I mean, either one is good enough. And probably the potential strong. I think he also is younger, isn't he? He's 21. He's 20. 
How old is Joshua Moore? I really don't want to wait if he's... Oh, we, oh F and that, uh, release. Oh, no, no, no. I think we're going to go high into the next round. I can't wait to spend more picks. Maybe not high. We can probably get away with... Maybe taking, you know, maybe almost going exactly where we were in the second round. So we give up a six-round pick to move up five spots in the third round with the Saints. And with this pick, we're going to be taking a wide receiver that could even be the future because of how young he is. He's 20 years old, maybe plays the number three for us this season. Wow, there's some other really good players here, though. Uh, nah, we'll still go with the wide receiver. Uh, 20 years old, decently fast. He's a little undersized, but... Maybe he'll be the future. I'm not sure. Oh, he absolutely is. 100%. Hidden development trait? He absolutely is. You know, I was thinking, you know, he starts the year as uh, number four, gets that wide receiver, you know, uh, rookie thing, and gets some XP. He's normal dev, but he's young as hell. And even next season, 21 years old, he'd be young for a rookie. So, uh, you know, that would have been a super steal. Joshua Moore is still there. Wow, we uh, potentially dodged a bullet. And we're going to go for the punter, Lou Headley. Who I do, uh, you know, shamelessly admit, remember had hidden. I remember. Let's take a look at our players. Obviously, we landed a quarterback for the future. 71 overall, which isn't spectacular. 70 overall for the DT is normal. Absolutely not spectacular. McMillan, Steele, Lou Headley, Steele. Only four for, uh, you know, draft picks in general. We also had a trade, a next year pick to do so with a fourth round not the greatest situation to be in, but we landed ourselves a quarterback. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm kind of just like cheesing the game by looking at overalls. But at this point, we've uh, you know done this class enough to know who's kind of good in the first round, right? Not, not the second round, though. You can see that TT I took. A lot of potential. That strength, though, man. And obviously the dev. Excuse me? Okay, I guess we're... Living in the hall. So we have the year two squad. We haven't added a ton. I would have loved to add a new guard, but Ed Ingram has actually not been too bad. I dropped him to a 68 overall. He still went up six overalls. Uh, obviously, he's still really rough, and of course, he's being built as a finesse guy, but 24 years old is really the worst part about him, not even his, uh, you know, overall. Uh, but looking at the wide receivers, we have the future potentially at McMillan. Uh, I'd imagine he's only star, but that's perfectly fine. Thielen... You know, at least another year under the belt, he's still solid enough, depending on how he regresses. Maybe he'll still play another year afterwards. Irv Smith had an okay year, despite the fact that we became a super run first team. Uh, obviously, that route running is still a long ways away. But everything else looks pretty good. We have the future at quarterback. I'm sorry, unless Kirk Cousins just absolutely dominates. I'm not really sure he's going to be around next season. Obviously, linebackers, Asamoa is going to be starting, but I don't know how old he is, 23, maybe even would be old in real life. I can't remember if I checked him. I'm pretty sure I checked all their ages just to make sure, you know, you can't let him in the club. If Never mind. Uh, Pickens, the left-end starter. I know Phillips is a higher overall, but really not fit to play that position. We need a pass rusher. He's 71 power move at that age, whereas Pickens is 75 finesse move, and he's 21. He just seems like a better fit on the interior as long as he's not the nose, which he isn't. Uh, Ungunjobi, obviously, is going to be the starter at right end, and uh, we have our edge for at least another couple of years. I'm not sure, even with the X-Factor dev up, if Zedaria is going to be around that long, as you know, he's not super great here. I feel like his run, his block shedding should be way higher than 74, but... I'm not going to be changing, you know, existing players' ratings too much unless it's a quarterback. Oh, now we want to talk about Jalen Naylor. Okay, dude, it's a little late. We've already replaced him. No, this was such an opportunity and he sold. We've had a bit of a... Of a Did anyone want to tell me Daniil Hunter was going to need a contract this year? Oh, uh, Hello. Uh, that should be one of the first things you put on my itinerary for the next season. Of course, this is a costly contract, but as far as my quick maths can tell me, it's not quite the value that he's worth, unfortunately. But I will say, a six-year deal, I'm willing to do a 155, which would put him around 26 per. Uh, that's more than I said, isn't it? Let's do a 153, which will put him about 25, maybe 26 per. But 
it also pays him till he's 33, which is a very big factor because obviously he's 27, which is still really young because he started in the league so young. I remember ever since he was drafted, he was super awesome in Madden to have for franchise. And yeah, I mean, till 33, it's a little bit longer than you would expect a contract re-signing to be. So, you know, I, I feel like that's not bad value. James Bradbury, we absolutely need to keep based on the, just the fact that we don't really have a number one outside of him. You know, obviously Booth is getting there, but he's not quite there. Uh, Bradbury, speaking of Bradbury, got another Bradbury to resign. A three-year, nearly 30 for the center. And based on how broke we are, I mean, I'm hoping Kirk is having a bad season because we can't afford him. So uh, I'm really hoping he sucks because otherwise it's going to be really unrealistic when we let him go. Uh, and yeah, there you go, Kirk. Sell it, baby. And Irv has been pretty tame as far as like how well he's playing. So a four-year 20 is super low. But at the same time, it, it's deserved. And for Dalvin Tomlinson, it's not like the greatest. He's not the greatest player in the world, but we're going to have a two-year, nearly $16 million deal. Madison, he's not a bad player at all, but we just have so many running backs here. We, we got to save money somewhere, and that's probably the easiest way to do it. And then Larry, unless he's playing really well, probably gets let go. Huge game against the Packers. Week 18 winner probably takes the division, and they do. Lo the Packers lost to us. Meaning that we not only get to the playoffs, but we also get to host them right again, right now, in the playoffs, right afterwards, which is just crazy. We rocked the uh, Dallas Cowboys uh, playbook all throughout the year, and we were doing really well. 3-0, lost two. I was like, okay, we win one, four, and two. Three straight losses, two wins, a loss, a win, a loss, and then three straight wins at the end to clutch up to go 10-7 and seven and make the postseason. Let's take a look at the numbers. Obviously, we looked midseason and saw that Kirk Cousins was not playing well. The yards cleaned up a little bit, but the touchdown-to-pick ratio is awful. Dalvin Cook was worse than normal. Justin Jefferson was pretty good, actually. Thielen was decent. McMillan was decent. And Irv Smith, not great. Going to be honest, not great, which, you know, wow. Okay, that's a lot of sacks allowed. Uh, you know, kind of backs up the claims of not paying him too much. Uh, Daniel Hunter, 13 and a half after his contract. Worth it. Zedaria Smith, 11 sacks. Still worth it. Picks looking okay. Asamoah had a really good year, actually, playing his first year as a starter. Greg Joseph, needing a contract, probably gets it again. I mean, he played even better this year and probably deserves to be paid. He kind of you know, getting disrespected a little bit here at, the, at this rate. Justin Herbert is the MVP of the league. Cam Newton still in play. That's why the Seahawks, I didn't think about it. That's why the Seahawks weren't terrible because Cam Newton's a glitch in the game. Actual glitch mode. Uh, any award wins? I don't think so, right? Like, I just don't imagine. Uh, none, not quarterback, obviously. Dalvin at five. Uh, Justin Jefferson at number three. They got rid of Wandale Robinson already. He's on the Falcons. What? Okay, dude. Uh, no one on O-line. No one on D-line, linebacker number two and number six. DB not on the list. And then kicker all the way down to eight. Really? With that accuracy? That's a little surprising, but okay, sure. But all right, uh, a higher overall than the Packers who actually go to the Super Bowl and win it quite a bit in these rebuilds. Can we knock them out, though, and make them feel bad? Zedarius, a chance to get that revenge. Green Bay looks like they sucked early on through a pick or something, but... Strike back with a touchdown drive, 10 to 7, 13 to 10. Green Bay and their special team, 17 to 13, 24 to 13 at half. Looking really strong on offense, but Packers are coming back. Only up by six, now down one. What is this choke job, boys? Come on. Oh, it's their ball, isn't it? Defense? We can't be choking to Rodgers. It's the opposite way around. I'm going to come in. Oh, what the hell is this? Are they actually going to throw this? Come on, Harrison. You do your Harrison Smith-like things. Anyone? Ah, oh, he's just wide open. I mean, Randall Cobb. We're getting beat by Randall Cobb. Wow, that's a choke. Another year one suckery. We played better this time around, but wow, that's awful. How do we choke? We were up by so much. Kirk Cousins, not as bad as last year, but still not great. Rodgers was decent. Uh, obviously, a lot of touchdowns through that pick early, but they bounced back from it. Uh, Rushing-wise, Dalvin was the best for sure. 
Cobb. Okay, dude. Randall Cobb, 190 yards, two touchdowns. We deserve to lose doing that. Come on. Jefferson tried to carry, but ultimately, you know, probably playing against Jair most of the game. Uh, ooh, they got my man, Justin. I was looking at him, but I, we need a quarterback more, and I think... You know, this season proved it more than ever. Of course, Greg Joseph, once again, hopefully he takes the contract. We're a little late re-signing him here, but hopefully he takes whatever we can offer him. And then, yeah, Booth with a pick, which is cool. But, man, even though we made the playoffs back-to-back -back years, which in itself is already a huge accomplishment for the Vikings in Madden Sim because EA just absolutely hates them. Disappointing losses, back-to-back. -back. Ironically enough, we talked about the Packers making the playoffs a lot, and that's exactly what they do here and win the Super Bowl. So, obviously... Sure, we gave them a run for their money, and we could have been the team to stop them early on, but we also did lose to the Super Bowl champs literally the first game, so you could also argue that if it wasn't for that matchup, you know, we would have played someone else instead, we could have maybe met them in the championship round and lost there instead or something, you know, so it is just kind of unlucky, perhaps. Dev ups, I didn't see any on offense. Defense, really? Zedarius is dropping. He's only 30. What? He's only 30. Nah, I'm fixing that. Five power move dropped at 30. What? Asamoah is one of the guys that went up in dev. And I think that is it. Oh, actually, no. Pickens went up in dev, but he's all the way down there. God damn it, game. But I don't even know if I want that because he's only 72 overall anyways. But yeah, I'm fixing Zedarius. I mean, he literally had 11 sacks after, what, 13, 12 and a half, I think? Come on, man. F like, fix your game. He's only 30, dude. He's a pass rusher. He's, you know, he's not like, uh, you know, a running back or something. Even then, 30 at running back isn't like the craziest thing of all time. Jeez, with this. Let's fix this while we're here, too. 90 overall power move. I mean, anyone who wants to complain about it can just, you know, cry to a wall because I don't give a damn. I mean, he's obviously playing well still, and he's only 30. 30. I could have maybe argued that Harrison Smith should have stayed well at uh, 33, but I didn't. I was like, you know what? He's old. He's white. I'm white. He's got no agility because we can't jump and we can't turn. Sorry, Harrison. I don't know why I just I went at you that hard, but I, I did. So it says we have about 24 mil left. Kirk Cousins, thankfully, we realistically don't want... Oh, wow, that, that number is really low there, Kirk. I feel like that number was a bit higher before the season ended. I don't know what would have potentially happened, old man. But Greg uh, Joseph, he's a kicker. He should last long enough. The man's finally got himself a home. A three-year 10.4 is not half bad for him, even though he's literally not upgraded at all. He's literally not moved a single overall, I don't think. But free agency, more importantly, who do we have to sign coming up next season? That's what matters. I think Zedarius, ironically enough, might be... Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, we're not spending any money. You got to pay Jefferson. He's going to be like a 27 mil per guy. Zadarius probably about the same, like, you know, same as what he's earning already if we decide to keep him. Eric Kendrick, sadly, is going to be gone. I mean, the man is regressing hard. Bradbury is going to be gone. We got to pay Ezra. Dantzler needs to be paid as a slot corner. This is a tough rebuild, dude. Like, this is just tough. Like, we got to pay some players. We're going to be broke, and we're going to lose some core starters on top of it. So we'll probably have 30 mil, like, extra next season, like, after next season. But we're going to have to po possibly replace Zedarius, absolutely replace Kendricks. I will say we might be able to release uh, Harrison Smith right now and save some money, which would be great. We release Harrison Smith as they would save 11 mil in 2024. Uh, of course, it's a little debatable because they have a cap hit, like, a dead hit of, like, 7 mil. 2025, they absolutely will not have him on the roster, but... I imagine before then he will be gone. So uh, we're going to knock that out now, save a little bit of money, and maybe spend a little money on a safety if there's anyone there. Of course, Lamar Jackson's there, which just doesn't make any sense. Terry McLaurin doesn't make any sense. Rashawn Gary could because of the, the money issue, and look how much he's asking for. Uh, Simmons, a guy that's just been constantly in free agency every rebuild we've done. Ed Oliver. That is a name drop. This would be costly, though. Like, you're looking at probably no less than 15 per. Can we do, like, a 3-year 45? I mean, we absolutely need the help on the interior. A 3-year 45, I think, would be absolutely fair for him. I mean, in Madden terms, it's like a steal. Yannick, back in free agency. Oh, want to return. Curtis Montez Sweat. Jamel Dean could use a corner, but maybe not right now. Uh, Garner Johnson, a guy that I would expect to be a free agent 
but also potentially traded. It would have probably happened last season, so he would actually be on a new team with a new contract, so that's just not realistic. It would be nice to just get a cheap safety as a backup, but, I mean, maybe Juan Thornhill, but other than that, I'm not really seeing that option right now. All right, let's see what we got. Obviously, Ed Oliver is going to join us because we gave him a pretty expensive deal. Well, I mean, not really even that expensive, to be honest, but Ed Oliver, a 3 or 45, which, like I said, to be honest, I'd be looking for more if I'm him, but Taylor Rapp, uh, 81 overall, 25 years old, a bit on the slower side, but, I mean, you're basically getting a three-year Harrison Smith that he would be paid at for one year for three years. So even if you found someone better at safety, you're getting a very solid backup. The price is right. I, I mean, I don't mind that at all. I think that's a good decision. Don't know where the hell he's at free safety. I forgot. So looking at what we need, uh, D-line set for at least another season or two with Dalvin Tomlinson at DT1. Oliver probably playing the right end spot. Linebacker probably look to draft someone to potentially replace Kendricks as soon as next season. Corners up there as well. Wide receiver, I think, is fine with McMillan and Thielen playing one more season. Anyways, this is actually a decent team. Maybe look to replace guard, but, I mean, I actually kind of like the way Ed Ingram's uh, developing for us here. He's a good finesse blocker. Needs those core ratings up, I will admit, but he's not a bad player. The team, outside of money concerns, looks actually better than I would have thought after that free agency period. Try to save as much money as we can for paying some of the other guys we do at the pay, but... Potentially just look for the future, right? Linebacker in general for outside or inside and probably cornerback. And I mean, I think everything else is fine. I just hope we saved enough money for Jefferson. If we have to lose anyone else, fair enough, but Jefferson cannot be lost. Oh, this is actually a good thing to do. I think you got to pay him long term anyway. So we're going to give the fifth year option to Justin Jefferson. How much actually is it for the fifth year? Like, was that actually worth doing or no? Like, it, does that even matter? Like, who asked? So just, oh my, that's a huge savings. So 14.8 mil on the fifth year option when we were probably looking to pay him about 26, 27 per. Hell yes, thank you. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just trying to get a feel for other people. I don't know if you guys watch any other rebuilders, but let me know what kind of contracts they offer. I'm kind of curious to see if they do the same thing. Maybe they offer even more, but... Do they go off of what the game asks for, or do they actually do what I do and kind of base it off of real life? You know, I look at the, the Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, you know, situation. Justin Jefferson's probably a top five wide receiver, especially here in Madden. I think he's worth that 25 plus mil range, whereas the game at this point maybe would ask for like 18 per. Same with some other positions like quarterback. Sometimes they ask for low, but, you know, they, they're worth more. Let me know. I'm just curious. I don't care at the end of the day. Like, you know, that's, they do what they want. I don't care, you know, if they're getting watched for the way they do things. It's working. It's the way it is. But uh, I'm just curious. I want to know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys hate when I do that and you're like, just give them the damn money. Fleece them. Now, we're sitting here at 22 in the first round, and there is at ET Mike Jackson, who does look insanely talented. But, oh man, he looks so good. But we have Dalvin Tomlinson for two more years. We just paid Ed Oliver a three-year 15. Our left end is obviously a starting caliber player now, even though he's a little bit lower on overall. He's star dev. So, I mean, you'd have to bet on this guy being a really high overall and slash or a decently high dev. I just don't know if I can. Of course, I know for a fact a guy that I cannot pass on is this guy, Paul Lewis. Holy crap. This guy is a freak. I have not seen a guy that good in a CPU class in I don't know how long, to be honest. Of course, linebacker is a really good position, but I don't think Kyle Horn's that good. I had him on my list because I was thinking, you know, maybe, but then I saw Overton, and I was like, yeah, I'd rather have Overton. You'll see in a second why. He just looks better. You know, B-zone coverage way faster. I mean, he's just blazing in speed, although Madden kind of doesn't matter because... I think that's just glitch. I don't think they intend players to have that for linebackers. You know, 439 and 437 we see sometimes. But yeah, I think we're going to trade down, especially since we don't have a third round pick, I believe. The Cardinals are giving us pretty good value here. We're gaining like a whole decent third in value, and we're still staying in the first round. I kind of have to take that. Let's see what the Cardinals really wanted to move up with. And it's an outside linebacker, which. I suppose for future proofing isn't like the furthest thing off from what I was going to do. Trey Law, uh, Lawrence looked decent, but he's kind of on the smaller size. We didn't really need that position anymore. 
Move back a couple of spots. Ooh, the Browns, though. That's 47, though. I kind of want to stay as high here as I can. <laughs> hey, what up? We're going to fleece the Bears. 34 and a fourth-round pick. I'm not in the business of giving interdivisional teams, you know, a good draft pick for next to nothing. So if you want to get up to this spot interdivisional, you're going to have to pay even more than the next team. Mike Jackson goes right there. I want to see how good he is. That's a really good team fit, too. Uh, but let's take a look at Mr. If he's still there, Overton. I think we need to future proof this position, and Nathan Overton is going to be the guy for us. Super fast, but also super slow at developing as he is normal development trade, but he's 21. So, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Obviously, I would have rather had hit him, but it doesn't always work out that way. With this pick, we're going to be taking that center. He's a 3-4, to four, but he's just so good, you just can't pass up on him. Here he is, Paul Lewis. A's across the board. I mean, he's got to be great. Hidden development trade on top of it. This guy's a nut. You could probably play him at tackle with his size. I mean, he's so good. He's so good. Of course, with this pick, don't really need a safety, but if Gilliard is as good as I remember, I might still take him anyways. B hip power, B zone. A little bit slower in that 40 than I thought I remembered, but... I just, unless he's superstar or better, which he very well could be, we'll find out after the draft, I can't make the selection. Actually, I can. I can. I, we have the luxury to do it. He's hidden development trade, so we at least have that chance for him to be superstar plus. I think Rap is the starter no matter what this year, though, because the only reason why Rap wouldn't be considered the better player is because of Dev, which if we check Dev and then make that decision, then it's obviously cheating, so... We're going to just be happy with the selection and see what happens. Also, maybe he's a bit bigger in size. I can't remember, but maybe he plays linebacker instead. I don't know. I'd be willing to say Overton was a bad pick, even though he wasn't. Uh, now, Jermaine King, 37 bench press reps. He had a B in awareness, B in play rec, but I have nothing on him on the first page. I have nothing for block shed or play, uh, power move. That's a huge risk. It really is. John Baker, though... I think is the better choice, as I did have an A finesse on him. We also do have Pickett, who I believe is a little raw, but he's fast. 6'2", 4'3", If we're going to take one of these guys in the this pick, <laughs> what round are we in? Late third? I think it's going to be the more important position for us, which is John Baker. I'm going to take John Baker. And he's hidden development trait. I've seen a few of these players now where they have that A finesse. They're projected late. They're a little weird in athleticism, but they're good. I mean, now Zedarius has to prove himself because otherwise uh, he's just asking to be got let go just based on money. And he's going he's gonna to be mad at this whole di damn division at this race. He's going to go to the Bears and Lions next and try to fight us there. But uh, do I just take the shot on Jermaine King just based on the, the power the act, the awareness, and the play rec? I don't know, because that corner is needed, too. Jermaine King, no matter what, has to sit. And with that knowledge, I might go pick it. I'm going to go with pick it. This is a high upside with that speed. 22 years old, normal development trait. Very iffy on the uh, agility, change of direction, and jumping. I think because of that jumping alone, he's a bust. Which I know, fourth round picks, you're starting to get to the point where it's like, Okay, they're not really expected to be good anymore, but it was a high fourth, so it's still you would have loved to have a decent pick there, but it is what it is, uh, and everyone's gone, unfortunately, but that's all right. We still had a pretty damn lo good-looking draft, if you ask me, which I imagine you did ask me. We're going to go with Tayshawn Golden, today three fast tight end who's pretty damn big. Tayshawn Golden, 86 speed, 83 excel. You could definitely use her that. You know, if you're actually playing the franchise, but as far as this one goes, it's going to be probably a pretty bad backup. We traded uh, three draft picks before this for like three six and two sevens, I believe. And then with our final pick, we're going to be taking Zach Nugent, the fullback, who actually looks, just based on some of the things we've seen, the B pass block, I think it was, an 86 strength at fullback. Guy actually kind of looks good, but we'll see. Uh, let's take a look at some of those overalls. I imagine that center is going to be an absolute freak. Okay, thank you. Maybe he even finds a spot to start, even depending on how good he is. Oh, he really needs to. 77 overall. This guy is insane. Look at him. He might already be our best lineman. Well, maybe our second best. Okay, maybe our third best, but he's still really good. Overton, obviously, was normal development trade, our highest draft pick, but he's obviously insanely fast. 
okay block shed, okay coverage, okay jumping, catching kind of sucks, press is awful. But I suppose for a Madden linebacker, that press isn't terrible. Gilliard, 74 overall. This guy looks pretty damn good already. 77 zone, 69 catch. I mean, he actually probably already is better than Rap, but we'll give it a season until we actually know his dev without looking at his dev. But I'm still curious anyways. Be a good backup regardless. Start of element trade. So, yeah, we'll see. But uh, probably starter next season. Then we have John Baker, the 70 overall, 80 finesse, hidden development trade outside linebacker who already has 73 block shit as well. Uh, the cornerback Pickett, maybe a, yeah, I was going to say maybe a backup, but maybe a backup safety, actually. Uh, the tight end is a 66 overall, which is kind of expected, but yeah, that's, that's a lot to work against. But, I mean, I suppose with aggressive catch, Maybe if you were going to, you'd have a, a okay canvas because of the speed, the size, and the, the age. 70 run block, though, with 86 strength and 76 speed. That's a pretty good looking fullback. But there was one player. Was it two players I wanted to look at? I can't remember, but I know for a fact I want to look at uh, Mike Jackson. Normal development trait, but he is a good overall. Uh, not a bad player, but... Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Let's take a look at that linebacker. He looked so much worse than the guy we took, and I just know he's going to be hidden. Where is he? Oh, did he not go into the second round? Oh, we, he went higher than... Our guy went higher than that guy? Horn went right here. Uh, of course he's hidden development rate. Of, of course. There's no way, dude. You look at him, his potentials, and he was just simply a worse player than ours. Like, he just simply was. I can't wait for him to be superstar. He is only star. Our guy is better because, you know, normal the star isn't crazy hard to get. But, yeah, I can't remember if there was anyone else. I guess since we're here, we'll look at the DT King. Here's King, 70 overall. Uh, thankfully, normal development trade. Not a bad player, but just not really something we need right now. But, yeah, that was a good draft. Uh, a couple of normals that we weren't maybe expecting, but also a couple of hiddens I wasn't expecting, so... You know, that outside linebacker kind of caught me, I wouldn't say off guard because I've seen it again you know, recently enough, but it was a nice pick regardless whether it's you know expected or not. Season 3, new quarterback, almost new wide receiver as uh, Adam Thielen is likely going to be gone after this season. I don't know if he needs a contract, but based on the penalty, I would assume that he needs one next season at least, or we can just release him uh, regardless. I put Lewis as the starter. I don't think Ingram's bad. But it's just tough because out the gate, Lewis is just so good. He's already better than Ingram. And at the end of the day, you can't just look at, okay, well, Ingram started for several years now. And this guy's a rookie. Unrealistic. The guy is literally higher overall than him already. Higher dev. Younger. Faster. He literally hasn't beat on everything, which would basically mean... Uh, if he was playing in practice, you would just notice he's playing better and that he would start. So that's that's kind of what would happen. Uh, but of course, defensively, you know, we need to replace Eric Kendricks next season. Uh, we need a new cornerback. Although I will say Dantzler and Booth aren't like the worst duo if it came down to it. But Dantzler being a little bit on the slower side, I don't know if I really want him as my boundary corner, even though he's great at man. D-line, Dalvin Tomlinson's definitely a guy we're looking to replace soon. Uh, but Ed Oliver was a huge addition to the team. He's playing right end right now. Taylor Rapp could be replaced by Gilliard, but of course Rapp will still play uh, You know the backup role to all the safeties if that's the case. So regardless, it's a good team. But once again, it's a little bit of a weird team because we're losing our starting quarterback, but we're gaining a guy with higher potential. We're losing one of our starting wide receivers next season with Thielen, but we're once again gaining a guy with higher potential. Same with uh, you know some of the defensive players. The real kind of loss is Kendricks. Is we really don't have a guy that's projected to be a better player than him in a season or two. So might have to grab someone from free agency or just hope that the guys we have, you know, develop. John Baker with a plus four to his block shedding, which is, you know, not bad. It gives us an opportunity to once again replace Zadarius Smith potentially. Not that we want to, but we kind of have to. And for this, I just want his zone coverage to go up. That's just busted. Like, he literally just gained zone coverage. Oh, my. Hey, look at this. Actually developing our wide receiver. The one we want to develop. He's at number three, too, which is really surprising. Usually it's like the fourth or fifth guy. Oh, freaking hell. 
Did I really miscount? We have a call in at quits, which I think is going to be Adam Thielen. Uh, oh, it's Eric Kendricks convincing to say. I was about to say, every time it's a, a retirement, it's either an offensive lineman or a defender. Oh, man, it's been feeling better. Only because we're winning. I'm, I'm nothing else. Ooh, a little surprise here. Lewis Seen with the dev up to superstar. So some of the players we're actually talking about, Zedaria Smith, a three-year 53. At this point, we have seen him regress really hard. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be comfortable doing more than a one-year deal, especially since we have someone waiting. It's just I wonder if we don't keep guys like Zedarius, will we just miss the window, the five-year window completely? You know, it's just... It's not easy, but a five-year 60 for Ezra, who is a good overall. Don't get me wrong. He's 86 overall. He's 25, but he is lacking. You know, his pass block power sucks. His run block power sucks. His pass blocking in general sucks, but his finesse is good. Once again, he's a guard, so it's like, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll appreciate him, but Dantzler, uh, he's going to be played, you know, paid like a slot corner because that's what he is for us. He's just too slow, dude. He's just, you know, if he's faster, he gets a massive deal. He's not, so he doesn't. But yeah, I'm still kind of deciding what I want to do with uh, Zadarius here. Is I still think he's a great player. I would do a one-year 19. So that works for me. Damn, dude. It's pretty much been like a 4-4 a four and four record since he's talked about this. So, I mean, at least he's back, I guess. Nothing like the good old NFC North. Obviously, we still earned our way. But if we didn't need to... I mean, you know, if we, we didn't, we wouldn't have had to, is what I should have said. But let's take a look at the season. A uh, really strong start, and then four losses out of five games. Thankfully, we won another game, lost one, but then won four pretty tough games. Broncos are not easy. Dallas is obviously not easy. Green Bay maybe are easy because they're 7 and 10. The Panthers, semi easy. Uh, you know, look at the Bears. I mean, I don't really feel like anyone needs to see that the Lions. Well, actually, you know what? The Lions have been all right in sim lately for, uh, you know, our rebuilds. But, you know, just just in case you're thinking there was funny business to guarantee us a playoff spot or something, I don't know. But looking at the quick numbers, I don't think I see anyone from our side. But Anthony Richardson, 22 interceptions. Man, these Vikings quarterbacks are throwing picks. But almost 5,000 yards, 36 touchdowns. Still good. Dalvin, not a great season. Receiving 1383 for Justin Jefferson, 1004 for Thielen, 947 for Smith, 936 for McMillan, and that's kind of it. As far as the blocking goes, tackles were kind of iffy. Zedarius, the sack totals 13, and Oliver, 12.5. Daniil, another bad year. Oh my, do we regret the re signing? Yes, kind of. Joseph, do not re regret the re signing. Pretty good stuff there. Wang Wu, no kick return or punt return touchdowns, which kind of sucks. But MVP of the league goes to Alvin Kamara. I don't imagine we would have had any awards that I can think of. Like, what would we have had? Nothing, really, that I can think of. Of course, Rashawn Gary goes to Tampa because they need more talent, obviously. As the Vikings are going against Seattle. Not like a huge rivalry, but maybe get a little bit of revenge after that. Pretty disappointing loss of the playoffs to them uh, some years back. 9-8 and eight versus our 11-7-6, and seven, six, was it? Uh, of course, the most important thing is that our overall is much higher than theirs, but that might change. If we lose it, Arius, if we lose Eric Kendricks, I mean, we're going to lose Eric Kendricks, but maybe we can keep Zedarius. I don't know. 21-17, like, we can afford him, but a three-year deal at 30 when he's regressing hard, oh my, this halftime score is absurd. It's a five-point game right now. It's now a 12-point game. Minnesota still has a chance. There's still absolutely a chance. Defense needs to wake up, though, and I don't think they're going to do it. Maybe they do. Hold on. It's an eight-point deficit with three minutes remaining. The offense is moving, and Anthony Richardson throws a pick to Tariq Woolen. I want to come in. I know there's, like, almost no chance to win this, but why not? Carson Wentz is who he lost to. Well, this is a loss. I mean, this this is not the formation you want to be running here. Right over the middle is so open. What, like, who is Asamoa going for? You might as well just let him have it. Like, what? who is he actually going for? I, I just want to look back at this. I get he's not the greatest player of all time, but who is he covering? Where is he going? Hello? Who are you covering, sir? 
What are you doing? Everyone is covered perfectly except for your guy. I don't understand what it is, but that little, like, hitch, it always kills. It kills the AI every day of the week. Everything is covered about as well as you could ask for, right? You know, whoever this is, maybe Dantzler, uh, you know, he's covering in between. You know, he's got the curl route, which Metcalf does win on. The flat's open, but, I mean, if you're going to let anything open, it's it's to the flat because that's a little bit longer of a throw, I suppose. So, I mean, good job, dude. Lost to an 81 overall Seahawks team. 49 points we gave up. 50 points we gave up. 10 seconds left. The clock is running, right? No. Eh. How's it even possible? <laughs> Whatever. We're going to throw this up and we'll have our own little mini Super Bowl with the with the theory that we would have won the game if we hit it. Oh, my. Jefferson had a chance there. Jefferson is a freak, dude. I've seen that man go crazy. Oh, it wasn't over. <laughs> I didn't even know Osborne was still on the team, by the way. Jefferson, of course, last play of the game. He's too tired to run the Hail Mary. <laughs> Makes sense. Good job, EA. McMillan. And, I mean, the ball's in there, but nobody comes away with it. Anthony Richardson absolutely did sell with his two interceptions, specifically that last one he threw, but it was still an okay performance. It was a gutsy one. At the end of the day, if you're giving up this kind of points to a Carson Wentz-led Seattle Seahawks team, I mean... You kind of have no chance to win, right? Of course, pass rush is just awful. Tariq Woolen and Jamal Adams with picks. I mean, you just can't give up that many points to Seahawks. I'm sorry, it's just not prime Seahawks. Even then, prime Seattle Seahawks were still a better defense than they were in offense anyways. So, I mean, they weren't just outscoring you. They were just locking you up. But not here today. They, uh, they absolutely were just outscoring us. The Cowboys and the Bengals in the Super Bowl. I mean, not the most unrealistic Super Bowl, right? And uh, the Cowboys win by three. At least a close game there. Obviously, we lost to the Seahawks. They obviously didn't take our spot to the Super Bowl. And we have a dev up for Mr. Richardson, which is pretty clutch since he sat his first year. We love to see that. Uh, he's really bad at deep accuracy, but everything else is looking pretty damn good. Uh, Thielen, he's still pretty good, dude. I'm just saying, like... I don't know. We can get rid of him if we absolutely need to as we get no dev ups on defense. But I don't know, man. I'm, I'm thinking we can maybe keep him. I don't know if I want to start him. But, yeah, as far as Zedarius goes, it looked like his overall dropped a lot. But as far as what's important, in my opinion, he's still good at what he needs to be good at. I don't want to, like, manually give him a contract. But, like, I mean, I suppose the way he's playing, he... He kind of would get paid in free agency, so I'm not going to actually do that. Really don't want to lose him, but I just can't pay him. For some reason, he's just regressing really hard. Now I can kind of see it a little bit, but he is regressing decently hard for his age in dev. But oh, now he wants the two-year 30, which I offered him a two-year 40, as you can see here. A two-year 30, I can maybe get behind. That I could do. I mean, that's... What is this asking? His bonus ask is so much less. Like, he's asking for 12. Let's give him that. I mean, that's more than he's asking for. Let's get him right to 30. Doesn't take it. Game sucks. No. Oh, his tag is only 15 mil. Oh, well, would you? I mean, why didn't you say so? Of course, James Bradbury, not a bad player still, but he did regress several overalls. Eric Kendricks, once again, kind of make that same argument, but... I think he at least has, you know, his time for the team has come. Uh, but Bradbury is still really good for his overall. Like, those are really good ratings for an 82 overall corner. I mean, I'm not really sure how they see that as 82. Six mil as well. I mean, I can find a use for him for a $7 million contract. Well, see it. Glad we offered you more than you, uh, you know, the fair price was. It's awesome. But yeah, 43 mil. I think it's most important to take a look at who we have to pay who, uh, oh yeah, we have to pay Jefferson finally, which is going to be like 28 mil probably. Uh, Thielen, we can get rid of. How much is it going to be saving us? That is a lot to save, even though he's playing really well still. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's anything we absolutely need to do to add to the team. Dalvin Tomlinson, I could, I wouldn't say cheat, but I could fix his contract because in real life, you obviously know these contracts are kind of front-loaded more than back-loaded, especially a team like ours who had this cap space when signing him. Uh, but I think Ingram, we could probably trade off for like a high fourth. I think we trade Ingram off for a high fourth, 
and maybe debate releasing Thielen. His could actually be like a, a regular season release, which would be crazy and super unfair, but I just don't know how much money we have to re-sign the guys we have to re-sign because we have some names, obviously. We have Derrissaw and you know, we have a bunch of guys to, to pay. Uh, as far as who we should go for, Michael Pierce didn't work out the first time. There's no way they would bring him back. Uh, J.J. Watt. Playing as the pure DT. I don't really think there's going to be a name here that's going to help us out. Maybe we can try to bring Eric Kendricks back on a cheaper deal. So we could use DT. We could use corner. Will we need middle linebacker, though? I was going to go with Kendricks on a one-year nine, but I seen Kenneth for a five-year 50, which I just felt like was the ultimate value for us. 83 overall, literally the same overall as Kendricks. Maybe one overall less, but obviously many years younger. And uh, we can definitely work with him. Overton... Could still have a chance to start the season after, as we have to pay Asamoa, and you know he is star development trait. Wait, was he always star? Actually, maybe that's one of our dev ups. Maybe he was star last season. I don't remember, but uh, obviously, you know he's a guy that might need some money. He's you know 78 overall star, but yeah, linebacker shouldn't be that much of an issue anymore. Uh, Baker will start for Zadarius if he's no longer good after next season. But corner and DT are absolutely needed, and maybe another wide receiver. But, I mean, McMillan, if he had to start at number two, is pretty damn good. He really is like a Justin Jefferson himself, just a little bit on the lighter side. And he really is very similar to him. And the good thing is we already have Justin Jefferson, in case you were wondering and did not know. There are some decent options here at 23 for the first round. You have Caldwell, who is... You know, a three or four round guy that you could wait on. We, I don't know if we really need corner that bad, but once again, Dantzler's so slow. I'd rather have someone that's fast. I know he's 5'11". 5'11", 203 is actually pretty prototypical. He's very fast. B zone. Don't know anything else about him. I had him scouted more, and I had... Uh, where? Oh, he might be gone, actually. It was a different DT scouted more. Uh, we also have this guy who uh, has 30 bench press reps, 475. I mean, it's just, it's tough. You have another guy that's, you know, really good wide receiver. His name was Dillard, I believe. You know, A, catching traffic, decently fast, you know, really good catching. But if I could, you know, I could probably just wait on this guy, Daniel Aralanes. If that's what you, how you say it, but a little bit slower, but... You know, B release, A catch in traffic, B spec, A break tackle. I mean, B, you know, he's pretty good. But I think if I were to take a bet on someone, this guy's good too. We need D lineman semi badly. I think we're going to go for the corner. I, I like the smaller corners in Madden. They just seem goaded. We'll see if that's the case here. And he is hit in development, right? 94 speed, 90 excel. A little disappointed about that jumping, but still 21 years old, hit in it. Automatic number two, in my opinion, just because of the speed. He's just so much better than the other guy, uh, Dantzler. Just, once again, because of that speed. It's just so hard to work with 87 speed. Like, And I know it's ironic because it's like, oh, well, it's a, you know, it's a rebuild. Technically, speed probably doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I want a little realism. You know, if you got a guy that's 87 speed, you're not going to start him at number one or two in Madden. Like, you just aren't. Damn, my man's Harvin is still there, dude. He's so tough to pass on. Harvin goes, and I'm not going to risk the wide receiver as it was going to be between Harvin and, and the other guy if we had to trade up, which we apparently do. And the Patriots need wide receiver. Could that make uh, this man right here available? He could, but they are also broke. I mean, if we can clear four mil off of them, this is like... Not a terrible trade for them. Obviously, Evans and Green mean nothing to us, but Thielen, 87, and Ingram for pick 44, huh? How would it gonna... What? I gotta fix this now, because clearly it's busted, because they literally have cap room. So we got the trade done, and I think it's, I mean, obviously a win for both sides, without a doubt. And with this pick, wow, they still have guys like Dillard there. Like, do I really bet against a 1-2 to two grade... Man, I really wish that E.T. was there now. None of the other guys are as good, I'll tell you what. Fowler's nowhere near as good. I'm probably going to pass on D.T. completely. Do I actually go ahead and just take this man? Dillard looks great, too. How old is man? East, I'm taking him. I'm going to take him. And he's hidden. I'm glad that we took him, obviously. Hidden development trait. 
I, <laughs> we have a six foot five guy as the number three wide receiver because I, I will say McMillan fits as the number three a bit better. Uh, but tell me, Dillard. I mean, it doesn't matter anyways. We got our guy. Yeah, it's about to say twenty two years old. I remember him being twenty two. Uh, I basically just went off of age there. I mean, simply put, Arizona's given us sixty six and ninety eight this year to move back. Uh, only like ten spots, which isn't even that crazy. Might do it again, a little bit closer to the middle of the round, and if the center's there, just take them. I'll take 71 from Detroit and gain a fifth next year. That's only about five spots back, and if the center's there, we're just going to take him for the future proofing of the center spot, which he is still there. So Mr. Philip Stafford is the choice. Welcome to the team. Better be hidden. He is, and yeah, he fits purely as a center uh, because of that size. Well, let's go to pick two in the fourth round. I'm not really expecting to see too many starting level talents or just even guys that we want at this point. But let's take a look. Uh, we still have Nick Fletcher. I almost called him Rick uh, Netchler. <laughs> Net Le Lech I don't I, That's impossible to say. Day three. I don't really see a lot out of this guy. But outside of lead block, he doesn't look terrible. I mean, I don't really know if we need to future-proof that position, but O'Neal's got to be getting older. What about Bradler Con uh, Bradley Connor? Jesus. Screw it. Add a wide receiver again. Why not? Normal dev. Slower than I expected, but I'd imagine he's still going to be a pretty good player. And if that tackle's there at 23, why not? Why not? We need depth on the team anyways. Nick Fletcher, why not? Why the F not? Because he's normal dev. Of course, that's... Uh, why didn't I think of that? Kyrie Stanley doesn't look good, but he's fast. And that's what all, you know, that's all that matters to me. 92 speed, 90 excel. Nine way was going to be gone soon, so. Got to add some talent. I know we have Ty Chandler, but he won't be here that much longer either, so. Just knock some of those out. This guy's probably going to suck, but why not? He's a three to four round grade uh, DT, and we need depth. Why not? You know, six round pick. It's not that big of a deal. And we're going to go with the weak-armed uh, Jake Huff, who, ironically enough, is hidden development trait, but I don't think that matters. I don't remember looking at his 40, but unless he's fast as hell, there is no use for an 83 throw power quarterback. I'm sorry. Let's take a look at the draft recap. I mean, even if he's an X-Factor, I don't think it's going to work out. 73, 73, 74, 72, 69, and then the rest kind of expected. 57 overall, especially with the QB breakout scenarios they have. Like, this guy is just useless. But it's it's something, I guess. I mean, sure. What What is the dev? It's going to be star, but... I mean, unless he had X-Factor, it's just there's no use. But Christy, I think because of the athleticism, is going to be the number two. Although, look at that zone coverage. Safety? Don't really need one, but... Going to be the number two cornerback. Wearing number 30, is it? That's all right, actually. Any superstar. Okay, well, I'm glad I made that call before, because... Yeah, I mean, it's fair enough. And then Daniel. This is a tougher one. He's a short route guy, even though he's huge. I mean, maybe give this guy time to develop before becoming the number two. I don't like him as a number three for that size, but his short route is his best route running, I guess. And as far as, like, what number? I guess 88? Star Devil would really love to see him at a you know, superstar, but that didn't happen, obviously. The center, hidden development trait. Obviously, the tackle was normal, but he's an okay overall, so it was still a good pick, obviously. Center, going to be the future center at some point. Mr. Philip Stafford, star development trait. Let's take a look at those wide receivers. They went really late, like really late. I mean, actually, first things first. Was the DT a first? No, the DT was a second rounder, wasn't he? So Joshua Harvin, 77 overall hidden. I was going to trade up for him, but I wasn't fully sold on him. And I absolutely should have been because he is kind of goaded. Thank God he's only star, but it's still only star is really good still, obviously. Dillard, 72 overall. Normal dev. Okay, um, I don't know what our guy's jumping was, but as far as a pure jump ball machine, the guy might be better though. 95 jumping, 86 spec, 85 catching traffic right out the gate. Normal dev sucks, but it's not like the end of the world. You know, if he's 23 or 24, maybe, but he, he wasn't, so... Interesting. Hawkins was also a guy I think that was on our list. Hidden development trade. Faster than I would have thought. Also, another jump ball god. This guy's really good, too. This was just like the, the year of the jump ball receivers or something like that. It's pretty interesting, actually. Star dev, similar to our guy. Was there any other wide receivers? This is a guy they mentioned from the prospect spotlight. Not terrible, to be fair, but... You know, 
little inathletic, if you will, outside of speed and excel. Can't remember if Allen was on our uh, list or not. But yeah, let's actually take a look at the guy. I can't remember if our guy was actually like a jump ball god or not. 91 jump. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty good at jumping. Based on age, I would say our guy is probably the best out of the bunch we looked at. It was close between him and Hawkins. So the, che the, the team is looking a little different, but... It's still good, right? McMillan could just come out and just be a god. He's only 22. That's kind of the whole point of, you know, grabbing him as young as he was. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of potential to work with. Just kind of work on that short route, which he doesn't love to do. So I'm going to try to upgrade him as much as I can when I can manually. Uh, obviously, wide receiver number three could be the wide receiver number two in the future. That face, he just looks so old. Irv Smith, I gotta admit, really has not developed. He just hasn't, but he's he's okay enough, to, I imagine. O-line looks great. Looking at the defensive side of things, you know, need a new DT in one. Pickens is getting there once again. He is a talented player, 86 finesse. You know, he's good at pass rushing. He just needs to actually put up some numbers for us. Safeties, you know, at least free safety looks great. Gilliard maybe takes over the job for Rap next season, but... Rap is really good. He's just, once again, very, very slow. Uh, linebackers, better. Uh, at least the inside linebackers. Murray's, you know, younger, so he might be better than Kendrick's already come on next season. But, yeah, I mean, we're in a weird spot where we may need a little luck to win the Super Bowl, but I don't know if we can even make one in five years. I don't know. We'll see. I don't want to do much more than five. I think six is the absolute cutoff point, but... I feel like, once again, five years is like, after five years, it's kind of just random, right? We've seen random teams win the Super Bowl, so it's it's not even really a rebuild anymore. It's just kind of a fail. Resign time, some pretty expensive names here. As Justin Jefferson, like we said, we wanted to do a uh, $27 million per year type of deal. Uh, how many years did he want? He wanted five. So a five-year, like, one is... A level I, I need, you know, I need help, Okay. Uh, I mean, he is really good, so... I mean, that seems fair, right? Maybe a little bit higher. One year... A five-year 140 is what we're going to be giving him. And, yeah, I mean, he's in-house as well, so... It makes more sense to be a little bit cheaper than maybe an open market guy. Uh, as far as Derisaw goes, I mean, even though he's given up a lot of sacks, he does need to be paid handsomely. Uh, so a five-year 100 mil on the dot. Is what he'll be getting. Uh, Andrew Booth, our new number one corner, who absolutely needs the monies. I think a six-year 70 is probably fair, right? Six-year 72? What does that come out to be? Ooh, that's not as much as I thought it was. Uh, I think about 14 and a half per is fair for him. He still needs to develop a little bit more. Is that what really? Five-year 72? That doesn't seem bad. Let's go... Five year 75, make it a clean contract. Asamoah, not actually asking for that much. Also, not super great, right? Coverage isn't great, block shed isn't great. I'd probably be willing to give him like a three year 15, just to be fair. I think even then it'd probably be a little bit low for real life, just because, you know, the dev and overall and age kind of signifies that he could be an above average player by the end of his career, which. I know by the end of his career is a long time for now, potentially, but Ty Chandler, uh, I think, really? Him and Wangwu at the same time? Hey, <laughs> hello. Uh, it seems a little strange. I don't know if I want to keep one of them, who it would be. The Wangwu, obviously, insanely fast, 85. Juke move, 86. Carry. And then Ty Chandler is pretty similar um, I guess Ty Chandler's technically better by a little. Wang Wu has also put up some pretty atrocious numbers for us. To the playoffs! Are we in them? We clutched the F up. We still didn't get the division, but we super clutched. Like, super ultra mega clutched after selling the season hard. We lost four out of the first five games. We won three in a row. Then we lost three in a row. Then we won six in a row. We were probably able to maybe lose one out of those. We said, you know what? Let's not take any chances. And we ended up winning in general. McMillan had a decent season. Anthony Richardson had a decent season. Touchdowns were a little low. Picks were a little better than last year. Dalvin was similar to last year. McMillan crushed it. Could go to superstar by you know from those yards alone. Jefferson was all right. Uh, Irv Smith was better than normal, and then the rookie actually had an okay season. 
blocking. Darisaw was awful. Uh, sack totals. Once again, Daniil Hunter is selling. Whereas Zedarius has been consistent. Seven sacks for Oliver. A little bit worse than last year. Pickens four and a half. I mean, we have really good individual players, but we are absolutely underplaying right now. I mean, we are not playing to our potential at all, but at least we had a couple of individual performances that were good. Uh, looking at any awards, Richardson at seven, Dalvin at seven, wide receiver at five and eight, O-line at seven, a lot of sevens and nine. Uh, what else do we have? D-line, no. Linebacker at 3 and 6. DB, no. A bunch of Buccaneers guys, though. And then kicker did not have a good year, so I did not expect him to be on that list. But let's move on now to our playoff game. Going up against the Green Bay Packers. The Tides, I wouldn't say technically turn, but, I mean, they're at home. So we'll see. Seen Rodgers retire before year one in Madden Rebuilds, but... Here, he is not in agreement with that as he is still here as we're entering almost the fifth year of the rebuild. And uh, let's see if we can get to the play, you know, the, the championship round, maybe the Super Bowl. We get the safety to start, which has been, I mean, really slow of a game so far. 16-3 uh, to halftime score. They get a huge rushing touchdown, huge touchdown for the Vikings. Up seven, tied up now. Come on, there you go. Nice little drive. Green Bay drives, but they only get three. Kind of reminded me a little bit of that Buccaneers game. And I don't know who the heck that is. Maybe I'm supposed to know, but I don't. Uh, it's four touchdowns, two interceptions. Not a great game, but better than Rodgers technically. Another really Rodgers performance. You know, not terrible technically, but also not enough risks perhaps. Rushing was uh, not very good for us. I mean, just really bad. Uh, McMillan, though, crushing it. Uh, as far as defensively goes, you know, pretty basic numbers. Barnes and Jair with interceptions. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. How the hell did we even win the game there? They they just they didn't turn the ball over, but they also didn't score enough. That might be the most realistic, uh, you know, rebuild kind of game I've seen ever. Of course, we go up three-man coverage. Does get his uh, speed, but I went with slot because usually you get kind of good upgrades on both, but not today. Uh, as far as Christie goes, I don't know if they're actually developing him as a zone corner or not, but it'd be kind of strange if they were. They were. Wow, that's interesting. I mean, I, it just seems like maybe the game just gives the player their highest rating, like, you know, highest rated thing in general. So, not the worst way to do it, I suppose, but it would be nice to just see them do, like, more balanced, perhaps. But into the divisional. It'd be a bit of a shocker to win it here as we are facing now against the Seahawks. Uh, once again, they beat us last year. About the same overall difference as last year as well. So we'll see, Hawks. <laughs> but here we are in the game. Looks like we are right to left. They uh, are left to right, of course. That's kind of how that would work. Very low scoring game, just like last time. But a field goal before halftime. Up three. Can't really remember how last game went, but... I mean, it's kind of similarly going is, is the way it looks. 17 all, 24 to 17. Seattle driving. I can't imagine they're not going to score here, and they do. The Vikings can win the game on this drive, and they're looking pretty good to do so. Third and ten. Please tell me, dude. Like, last time we did a rebuild, I had to allow it because it benefited us, but if our kicker didn't miss a field goal... I mean, he didn't miss a field goal. The last time, they the guy missed two field goals. Our guy didn't miss one. So, just based on common sense alone, you would say that the game just sucks and our guy did not kick the field goal. Like, it, like what? Whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll see if maybe we can win it on our own. Maybe we don't need to back out or anything like that. But, yeah, I mean, good start. That's a really good punt, dude. I'm coming into the game. I don't care. I want to win this game. Even though it wouldn't be legit, if you will, it still would be more legit to win it this way. So, more legit to quit. Jefferson on that quick could be the look. And that's going to be a tough throw, and he hits it. That's a dot over Jamal Adams. But it seems like a lot of times we come up with a clutch first down, and they throw an interception, like, right away. Oh, my God. It's so unrealistic, but I'm going to come in and just... I'm going to force my way down the field here. I'm going to say that. I don't know if I actually will or not. It's going to be tough. 
And I trusted Jefferson more than anyone. He holds on even with Jamal on him with the rack catch. And, of course, he throws a pick. Oh, my God. I'm backing up. We're not. I'm not losing the game because EA sucks, okay? I'm sorry. You can say what you want. You can say, oh, well, last time, you know, you didn't. We, uh, it's, it, you know, it's different because they missed two field goals. We missed none. It's not our fault. Simply put, I'm just saying. Probably not going to make it anyways. I'm not going to win the Super Bowl anyways. But still, it's unfair to lose a game when your kicker just didn't miss a field goal. If he would have missed, I would have said, screw it. You know what? He missed a field goal. Maybe that was the field goal he missed. There's no way to prove it. But yeah, CJ Stroud, a monster for the Giants here this time. They're a very good overall. Anthony Richardson, kind of like a mini CJ Stroud. Can he beat his father? <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. 14 to 0, though. Not a bad start at all. 21 to 0 at halftime. I wouldn't call it 28 to 0 at halftime. 35 to 0 to start the second half. 38 to nil. They finally get points on the board. I was about to say it's not really a you know like an upset, if you will, but based on that 14 and 3 record, what is happening on the screen there? Based on that 14 and 3 record, it kind of was, right? Stroud. Got locked up. Richardson threw a pick, but he still had a really, really good game. Uh, looking at the receiving numbers, Jefferson finally taking over a bit there. Irv Smith, not too bad. Defensively, Ed Oliver, Asamoah, and Zedarius with sacks. Quay Walker apparently is a uh, New York Giant. Dancer with a pick, Booth with a pick, and Asamoah, who just had a really good game in general. And Greg Joseph. I mean, we can't expect him to miss kicks because he's just a god, apparently. We took the chance on him. We gave him that extra year, gave him the long term, and it's paid off dividends. But maybe I am wrong as we are officially headed to the Super Bowl. Going up against the Raiders, also 10-7. and seven, Very similar teams in overall. Any dev ups? None for Richardson. None for McMillan. Really? That is harsh, dude. Of all the players to not get a dev up, he was not one that I was expecting to be on that list. Defensively, though, maybe dev ups? Question mark? Um, no, unfortunately. The answer is no, there are no dev ups. Wow, not a single dev up across the entire team, which I will say on defense, didn't really feel like we deserved any. Awesome, oh, maybe, but... All right, let's go in. Going against those 10-7 and 7 Las Vegas Raiders. Is it finally time for Minnesota to win a ring? Five trips now. Going to the end of the game. I would assume left to right is the Raiders. 7 to 0. 14 to 0. 7 to 14. 21 to 7. 28 to 7. We are kind of smoking these last two games. Uh oh. Raiders coming back. Still plenty of time. Only two touchdown lead. And I imagine that's going to be it as our defense is locking. Don't get me wrong. The offense is really solid. But the defense has been really good. I know we gave up 24 points, a little bit of garbage time there, but locking up hard, probably setting up short fields at times, and ultimately winning the big dance. I don't even remember seeing that celebration, but a bunch of misfits, if you will, in a wrap 84 speed. Who would really give him a chance to be their starting strong safety here? We did. That's freaking who. Is that Trubisky? Who the hell is that? I have no idea who that is, to be honest. Um, but McMillan... You know, getting a chance to be the number two kind of emerged as the number one, if you will. Uh, we did have him in the slot, but he was number two wide receiver still. And obviously just moving him all around. And, he, you know, he turned out to be a Justin Jefferson himself, like we said. Anthony Richardson, Super Bowl winning quarterback. Maybe not like the ultimate carry guy, but, you know, showed himself up as a, a gunslinger, if you will. It's weird his deep throwing was really bad, despite him having the strength that he has. But... He ended up being a very, uh, very good player when it comes to the yards and touchdowns. And he threw a couple of picks here and there, but he just kept slinging. And it was Grayson McCall is who they had. Um, he just kept on slinging, and it worked out. Like I said, that defense allowing 9 for 13 for Jacobs to run. That is awful, which is great <laughs> for us. Devontae was okay. Waller was solid, though. Once again, proving that our linebackers are a little weak. Ain't gonna lie. Of course, I think the big problem with that team is if you look at the names they have, they're all the same names. You know, three or four years from now, I can't really say Waller and, uh, you know, Renfro would be at the top of their games. Obviously, Devontae you wouldn't get rid of, but still, like, you know, it's not like he's it's the same team as they would have had to start 
talent wise yet that is what they stuck with uh, obviously they still have Chandler Jones I mean he can't be that good of an overall anymore uh, Jonathan Abram maybe he's okay but Kenneth Murray coming away with a pick is clutch and then once again Greg Joseph just god mode I mean dudes just don't he just don't miss he doesn't miss in the postseason at least I'll tell you that but yeah, let's take a single look at the uh, the team, if you will. Actually, before I do anything, show you guys, other than the Seahawks game, which you know, it's cheating, it's kind of cheating. I mean, it's it's not really cheating, right? Because like the team drove down for the Super Bowl or for the for the kick for the game winning kick, twenty five seconds left, maybe even had a timeout if I can remember correctly, and they just didn't attempt the field goal. If you miss the field goal, fair enough. Like, even if we missed a single field goal and there's a good chance that that wasn't even the field goal he missed, I would have said, fair enough. But he had zero missed field goals. There's literally, it was, we didn't get the field goal unit out there. How many times have you seen a team have 25 seconds in the fourth or overtime inside, what was it, like the 20, I think? It was really close, and they don't get the unit out there. It, does, it doesn't happen, of course. Look at Jefferson. Oh, my. I mean, we would love a little more speed or excel, I suppose, but literally 99 everything. Literally. Outside of speed, excel, and agility, which is still pretty damn good, 99 everything. That's actually cracked. That's actually insane. Of course, didn't get his X-Factor ability. Dalvin Cook, a guy that I kind of really didn't even remember talking about too much, but... Yeah, he's obviously pretty good. He's got a little bit of uh, doability, if you will. Stiff arm must have dropped a bit because I thought his stiff arm was always pretty good in the game. Anthony Richardson, the quarterback, you know, once again, he's delayed as a starter for one year, and that hurt his ratings a bit, but he's still good enough, and he still has plenty of time to develop, and he has 98 throw power now. McMillan, you know, one year as a true starter, ended up having uh, a really good year, and like I said, he's well on his way to becoming one of the better receivers in the league. What actually is his overall? Like his, you know, 38th wide receiver. That's not crazy bad, especially since he's not a true number one yet. Irv Smith, he was okay. Yeah, he had a really good year last year. He's okay. Uh, Brian O'Neill, 91 overall. How was he developed? He had to be in agility, right? Yeah, I was about to say. Really good in general, though. You know, he's pass block power. He's just a great pass blocker. This is insane. Uh, Lewis barely started, but man, he's had such a great start with his overall that he's just a freak. I mean, look at the strength. Look at the, the power blocking Bradbury, who is 30 years old now looking to be replaced soon enough. A weird little player. I mean, he's kind of finesse style, despite the fact that we need him to not be, I suppose he is a center. He's kind of on the smaller side. So I, I guess and also another finesse player with Ezra Cleveland, who's just not good at pass block regular and pass block power is awful, but Still decent, and Darisaw, unfortunately, I think is also a power blocker, but I guess, you know, at least his pass block is 80. You know, still kind of lacking, though. You know, considering how good of a start he has with his youth and his dev and the fact that he started the whole season and he went up a bunch of overalls, he's still really, like, it's like a ton of holes, you know? There's a ton of holes in his uh, his ratings, but Zedarius, still really good. You know, we fixed him that one really bad dev down, and he just, ever since, has been all right. Lewis Seen, really solid, really solid player, 91 zone coverage. Daniel Hunter probably regressing, 30 years old now, uh, very good player. He's got dual style with the uh, the block shed at least, maybe not dual style, but multiple facets if you will. Uh, Kenneth Murray came out of the, the team last year and uh, or this year and absolutely worth it for him because he is now a Super Bowl champion. Rap, let's see if he went up in overall at all, of course, or speed, you know, 86 zone coverage. Very smart player, just so slow. But obviously, it didn't end up hurting him. Gilliard probably should have been the starter, but Rap was just such a good overall. At least you have potential with him, anyways. Still, Ed Oliver probably doesn't matter since we didn't technically develop him, and he's just a pure block shedder, pretty much, which is a little iffy. Pickens, obviously, the finesse type, and then you have uh, Dalvin, who's the block shedder. Insane man corner in uh, Booth. They just didn't develop his zone at all. But just look at the press, man. He's just a freak. Christie, of course, is the zone coverage guy, which I don't know if that's really how it works, but sure. Uh, I can't remember if he started with 95 speed. That seems a bit high, but maybe that was. And then Dancer got a speed upgrade, really good man corner. And Yeah, I mean, the team is good. It's definitely not one of our best, though. I'm a little surprised we even won the Super Bowl, but 
Definitely not one of our best, but we did just enough. Although I will say, once again, maybe kind of shouldn't have went because the Seahawks technically beat us twice, even though we've been over it. I, I think it's justified, in my opinion. Anyways, though, if you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter, Jump Care, second channel, Care Plays. And I'm recording this a little early, uh, but maybe streams on Twitch.tv slash Jump Care. I'm trying to fix my settings and all that, and it's just not working. But, you know, this is being uploaded a couple days down the line, so hopefully maybe I found a way to get it working. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, if you guys have any teams you want to see next, uh, you know, even if I'm not streaming, still daily uploads other than well i say that but i don't upload after a rebuild so i mean daily uploads outside of after a rebuild uh, if you guys have any teams you want to see next let me know in the comment section below obviously i still have to do the titans some other teams i still have to do but you know the giants but i'm trying to do some teams that nobody's done yet well at least at the time of this recording i suppose and yeah let me know in the comment section below but that's about it thanks for watching hopefully you guys come back for next video but on till next video see ya